For some cave divers, the reward of standing in a place that no one has ever stood before and seeing that beauty that doesn't exist above ground is worth the risk of danger and potential death. Some do it for the thrill and can't live without taking these risks. This is the story of two friends who believed this, and for this video, viewer discretion is strongly advised. Nestled in the serene countryside of southern China, Duan boasts breathtaking hills and pristine rivers, providing a stark contrast to the bustling megacities that define China. Divers are attracted to the magnificent landscape of rivers and caves, and underwater cave formations. The area is part of a huge expanse of the South China Crass System, which was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2007. The region is home to more than 6,000 miles or 10,000 kilometers of underground rivers. Accessing these caves is no easy feat. They are located in the rural mountain areas with no cellular reception or GPS navigation. Instead, one must rely on guides to navigate them over the terrain. Cave diving began in Duan in the 1970s, when the first Russian divers visited the area, followed by British and French teams. The caves vary in size, with some featuring stunning stalactites and stalagmites, while deeper passages have smooth walls carved by water flow over millennia. The Juden Cave, celebrated for its notable feature, the Juden Skylight, serves as a mesmerizing portal to the subterranean world. Comprising of four skylights, it allows divers to plunge into the abyss, particularly when water overflows from these openings. The skylight, while not vast, is profoundly deep, sparking theories of its connection to intercontinental subterranean rivers. However, these theories remain unvalidated due to the inability to fully explore the cave's depths. The intrigue of this underwater mystery captivated diver Wang Dao, while another diver, Han Ting, set an Asian cave diving record here, descending to 910 feet or 277 meters over the grueling 12.5 hour dive. With speculated depths reaching even deeper, Juden Skylight has earned the name Underwater Everest, standing as Asia's deepest water-filled cave. Cave diving encapsulates a myriad of formidable challenges, distinguishing it significantly from open water diving. Notably, while open waters generally allow divers to direct descent to the surface during emergencies, cave divers navigate through complex underwater labyrinths, where a straightforward exit is not an option and quick evacuations during accidents can be almost impossible, potentially depleting vital oxygen supplies. Given the intricate environment and poor visibility, divers rely heavily on guide ropes and expert navigation skills to traverse the submerged caves. Human and equipment limitations, such as constrained oxygen supplies and the hazards of utilizing pure oxygen at intense depths, like oxygen poisoning, further escalate the risks. Divers grapple with potential nitrogen narcosis and must mitigate decompression sickness by adopting slow, measured ascents. These perilous and complex factors necessitate extensive training and caution, affirming cave diving as an exceptionally high-risk activity. Wang Dao dedicated countless hours to researching the rich history of the dive team expeditions in the region. He meticulously poured over archives, documents, and anecdotes, piercing together the cave's enigmatic past. With thirst for first-hand knowledge, he actually went to the site and struck up conversations with some of the locals, hoping to try to learn more of the hidden lore of the cave and its labyrinth passages. Some of the stories that intrigued him the most were the recent daring attempts by divers to reach uncharted depths, stories shrouded in both fascination and tragedy. The locals recounted tales of brave souls who had dared to penetrate the cave's unforgiving recesses, only to face insurmountable challenges. Some of them tragically had to pay the ultimate price, succumbing to the treacherous allure of the cave's mysteries. It was during these conversations that Wang learned about Hong Ting. Han's unwavering commitment to uncovering the secrets concealed within the cave's heart stirred Wang's curiosity. Han had become a legend in his own right, a fearless explorer who had made it his life's mission to delve deeper into the traverse, further into unknown passages. He wanted to explore all the unknown parts of the cave and go as deep as possible, while still making it out in one piece. His relentless pursuit of the underground river and uncharted terrain had left an indelible mark on the cave diving community, inspiring a whole generation of new adventurers, including Wang Dao himself. 
Wang Dao and his diving companion, and really good friend, Wang Young, embarked on their first diving expedition into the depths of the Judin Cave in early summer 2010. The moment they submerged beneath the surface, they were instantly enchanted by the ethereal beauty that lay hidden beneath the cave's crystalline waters. Sunlight filtered through the submerged rocks, casting mesmerizing patterns on the cave walls adorned with vibrant coral formations. As the years passed, their fascination with the cave only deepened, fueling an insatiable curiosity that drew them back time and time again. With each dive, they dared to venture deeper, acclimating themselves to the challenges that accompanied descending into the abyss. The deeper they ventured into the cave, the more stress they had to bear mentally, and the danger level went up dramatically. They were not sure how far they could push themselves, so they kept going, even though they had talks about having to limit their extensive exploring of the cave. In March 2014, Pascal Burnaby, the renowned French cave diver holding the world record for deep diving, mapped out a previously unexplored section of the cave at Judin North Outlet, reaching a staggering depth of 560 feet or 160 meters. Hearing about this news, Wang Dao and Wang Young were ecstatic and immediately sought the guidance of Pascal. The meeting was a pivotal moment in their journey, as he shared his wealth of experience and helped them devise an ambitious plan to descend to a staggering depth of 560 feet 170 meters by themselves. Pascal also mentioned that divers often have psychological problems after exceeding the 560 feet mark, including HPNS, sudden coma during ascent, decompression sickness, etc. The research on the depth compression table was also not perfect, which was concerning. They asked Pascal in detail about his dive into the cave. Wang Dao ruled out the possibility of the cave losing visibility and confirmed the direction and size of the passage. After subsequent research and evaluation, they concluded that the plan to dive to a depth of 560 feet 170 meters, would be a complex but not an impossible dive. So then they decided to make a plan to continue extending the main rope past that depth and head into unexplored areas. Their preparations were demanding. They upgraded their equipment, fine-tuned their skills, and poured over intricate dive plans. The impending dive was not just a test of their physical abilities, but also a testament to their unwavering passion for exploration. This is something they felt they had to do. The cave beckoned them, promising secrets and marvels that no one had ever witnessed before. On May 13th, 2014, Wang Dao and Wang Young and their trusty support diver, Zhou Pei, stood on the precipice of a daring adventure as they approached the north entrance of the Judin Cave. Once they completed the inspection of their surface equipment, Wang Dao and Wang Young eagerly embarked on their expedition as they entered the cave. Once they got in, they diligently checked the labels on their decompression cylinders and monitored the remaining gas volume. They navigated the underwater terrain with precision, making their way further down. Then, they soon transitioned to the first stage of their cylinders, a critical step in their journey. As they continued their descent, an unexpected twist tested their composure. Wang Dao, using his trusty light, signaled to Wang Young urgently. Wang Young soon realized that his stage cylinder's first stage connector was leaking, a potentially dangerous situation. Without hesitation, Wang Young sealed the cylinder, tightening the connector, and then cautiously reopened it. The leak had been fixed, affirming that Wang Dao's diving status remained normal. Their time in the cave had already reached approximately 12 minutes at this juncture. Pressing forward, they ventured deeper into the submerged world, encountering a challenging low visibility zone where water seemed to conspire against them and there was very little visibility. Swiftly, they maneuvered through this obstacle, emerging on the other side where visibility restored to a more normal 10 feet or 3 meters. Descending further, they paused briefly to ensure each other's safety before continuing the expedition. Around 500 feet or 150 meters, Wang Young made the switch to his second stage gas cylinder following the meticulously planned procedure. Simultaneously, Wang Dao transitioned his main gas cylinder and their shared adventure pressed on. The journey led them to a depth of 530 feet or 164 meters, where Wang Dao skillfully marked the guide rope with arrows, guiding their path forward as Wang Young ventured deeper into the uncharted passages. As they pushed the boundaries of their endurance, Wang Young felt a slight acceleration in his breathing and a tinge of numbness. It was a perplexing sensation, considering their extensive training, including deep sea practice and even night dives. 
Wang Dao remained busy arranging the arrows on the line, and visual inspections reassured that everything appeared normal. Yet, a sense of unease lingered in the watery depths, a prelude to the mysteries and challenges that awaited them in the heart of the abyss. When they first got in the cave, they had a sense of urgency. They really wanted to get in there, explore as much as possible, and get out. But now they had been in there for a while, and the clock was ticking. Their entire dive had spanned more than 21 minutes. As they rose, Wang Young glanced at his second stage cylinder gauge, noting that he still had 130 bars of precious air remaining, which was cutting it real close. Suddenly, their surroundings took a disorienting turn. Visibility plummeted, wrapping them in an eerie shroud of uncertainty. They couldn't see anything down there. Then, something unexpected happened that sent shockwaves through Wang Young's senses. The guide rope, their lifeline to the surface, inexplicably vanished at the knot. Wang Young exchanged a grim, knowing look to Wang Dao. There was no time for fear. Immediate action was their only recourse. Instinct guided Wang Young as he frantically traversed the chamber's wall in search of their lost line. The precious seconds ticked away relentlessly, and at this depth, their air supply diminished at a perilous pace. With adrenaline surging through their veins, their singular focus was finding the guide rope, and in a matter of two to three intense minutes, they rediscovered it, dangling in the middle of the cave passage. Relief washed over them and their heart rate slowed as they resumed their ascent. Switching to his main tank at this point, Wang Young continued his upward journey. Then, a tremor in the dimly lit passage caught his attention. Wang Young peered down and observed Wang Dao, his best friend, wedged beneath the jutting rock. His light illuminated his neck, a signal that his air was dwindling. Without hesitation, Wang Young offered his long hose, initiating a synchronized dance of survival. Surprisingly, Wang Dao's air had vanished at an astonishing pace. Swiftly, Wang Young inserted his long hose into Wang Dao's mouth, allowing him an exchange of breath. His own air gauge told a daunting tale. It was a harrowing realization that their dwindling air supply could sustain two anxious divers for just a mere three to four more minutes at that depth. The pressure was unrelenting, urging them to ascend rapidly. Wang Young signaled the ascent to Wang Dao, and they calmly acknowledged with an okay gesture. Their collective will to survive propelled them upward. Wang Young strapped the barometer to Wang Dao's chest for quick reference. With their gas supply near its limits, they decided to expedite their ascent to the decompression cylinder, and then worrying about all the other issues they had later. As they continued to ascend, Wang Young's left hand clung to the guide rope, while his right hand firmly pulled Wang Dao alongside him. The two friends were in a really bad situation. Clinging to a rock, Wang Young couldn't stop himself from thinking about his rapidly dwindling air supply. He thought about the safety of the stage bottle. Fleeting relief was on the horizon. Suddenly, Wang Dao floated upward and out of reach, his form disappearing into the abyss above. Desperation set in as Wang Young realized he could not let go of the guide rope to go find Wang Dao. His consciousness faded in and out as his air supply plummeted to 20. Despite Wang Young's eroded mental state, he managed to find and switch his air tank cylinders. With the new air helping his brain think more clearly, panic ensued when he grasped the reality of Wang Dao's disappearance. Isolation overwhelmed him, yet an adamant resolve held Wang Young forward. He had to find his friend. The cave, once familiar, morphed into a different planet. Wang Young's quest to locate Wang Dao amidst the constricting pressure and waning air continued. He was desperately clutching to a shred of hope. His reality was blurred, converging with the perilous symptoms of impending oxygen toxicity. Consumed by desperation, part of Wang Young was willing to succumb, joining Wang Dao wherever he was. Survival instinct jolted Wang Young into a rapid ascent, forgoing the necessary decompression stops propelled by the urgency to inform their support diver, Zhou Pei. Frantically moving through the cave passages, Wang Young finally saw Zhou Pei's lights, a semblance of salvation amidst a nightmare. Zhou Pei knew that his friends should have been out of the cave a while ago, so he entered the cave and tried to swim down to find them. Yet, beneath the relief of seeing Zhou Pei lingered the unresolved anguish. The whereabouts of Wang Dao remained an unsolved mystery, interwoven with gut-wrenching guilt and sorrow. Upon meeting support diver Zhou Pei, Wang Young relayed the chilling desperation from Wang Dao with hand signals. 
Joe Pei knew that he had to get Wang Yang out of the cave immediately due to his almost expelled air supply. Shock visibly shattered Wang Yang's composure, his subsequent solo descent seeking any trace of Wang Dao. Momentarily, Wang Yun's anxiety ebbed, only to be quickly unspurred by an uncontrollable, vertigo-induced 360-degree spin of his surroundings. His grip on a rock in Zhou Pei's return stabilized his condition. Wang Yun momentarily clung to him, articulating Wang Dao's plight. Attempting to ascend, searing pain crawled at his leg joints. A rapid ascent had incited nitrogen and helium bubble expansion within him. Desperately signaling, they descended to the next decompression stop, where the pain temporarily subsided. Joe Pei, still adamant on locating Wang Dao, was greeted with Wang Young's exhaustive plea to keep watch over him. Wang Young's proximity to morality became acutely apparent. Self-diagnosis attempts muddled with his deteriorating condition. He wasn't sure if it was the rapid ascent consequences, oxygen poisoning, or inner ear decompression sickness. With a cautious upward movement, guided by Joe Pei, they navigated through the stops at varying depths. Vomiting ensued, weakness prevailed, yet persistent breathing lingered. Now suspecting oxygen poisoning, Wang Young oscillated between gas mixes to mitigate symptoms, ultimately facing sporadic cramps. During intermittent consciousness, Wang Young's existence narrowed to a fragile dance between breathing, observing the rope, time checking, and depth monitoring. As the desolation of frigid water seeped in, Joe Pei, his lifeline, aided his transition to pure oxygen and oscillated to low oxygen gas to starve off further poisoning. Sinking into periodic unconsciousness, his insistent awakenings provided a tenuous tether to life. Upon reaching the surface, emergency notifications were sent out after Wang Young's truncated recounting. Pain subsiding, but dizziness and nausea persisting, their total decompression spanned roughly 150 minutes, starkly contrasting that initially planned three and a half hours, encapsulating a haunting dive where death silently lingered amidst the depths, an unresolved ache for Wang Dao forever imprinted in his memory. After a harrowing underwater ordeal, Joe Pei, alongside others, laboriously dragged Wang Young ashore, removed his diving equipment, and positioned him on the road to await an ambulance. Upon notifying local authorities and soliciting a French diving team in Duan, search efforts for Wang Dao were arranged for the following morning. That evening, from the hospital amidst continuous bouts of dizziness and vomiting, Wang Young briefed the French team on the incident, instructing a 50 to 80 meter search zone. Wang Young's physical condition, marred by muscle pain and arm vessel swelling, potential decompression sickness indicators, eventually stabilized after two hyperbaric treatments. Beginning at 9 a.m., April 19th, body retrieval operation, spearheaded by Frenchman Pierre, unfolded. Wang Dao's body was swiftly discovered at 150 feet or 51 meters by the first dive team, likely swept into a horizontal passage by currents. The second team, after an hour, successfully brought Wang Dao and decompression cylinders to the surface. His body found with his dive mask still on, but without a regulator, and he showed no signs of struggle. On April 20th, 2014, Wang Dao's remains were cremated in China after a heartfelt memorial service was held. His friends and fellow divers paid their respects, laying flower wreaths in his honor. Wang Dao took his final journey, surrounded by the support and condolences of those who cherished his memory. And that's all I have for you today, and I appreciate you watching until the end. If you found this story both fascinating and heartbreaking, be sure to show some love to the like button, and subscribe to our channel for more stories like this one. I hope to see you at the next one.